Harry here from Chat Spanish. Apologies, it's been a while. I've had COVID, got my eyebrow pierced as well. Nice addition to my character. Different setting as well, you'll notice, thanks to my new friend Victor, who quite rightly pointed out that the audio quality was shocking on the previous video, so hopefully this will correct that. But we're back, and today we're going to look at fijar versus fijarse, a nice little Spanish verb with a few different meanings. So I'm going to look at some examples, I'm going to clear things up for everyone, and then you're going to scroll down, leave some comments and feedback in the, in the comment section, like this video, and above all, do subscribe, it means the world to me. And check out the website as well, chatspanish.online, and pop your new uh, your email in there to subscribe for the weekly newsletter. Vamos. Fijar versus fijarse. Let's get into this one. Empezamos con fijar. And fijar has three different meanings, depending on how it's used. So the first one, it can be translated as to determine, to set, or to establish something. Vale? Un ejemplo. Fijamos una fecha para el examen. We set a date for the exam. The present tense here. Fijamos una fecha, date, para el examen. Fun fact, by the way, examen in the plural, so los exámenes, has an accent on the A, but it does not in just the singular. Second example. ¿Puedes fijar una hora para el almuerzo? Can you set the time for lunch? All right. So fijar in this case is kind of fixing, a setting, a planning for a date or a time or something like that. It's a nice, a nice one to use. Next up, we have to focus or to keep your eyes on. So fijar la mirada. I rushed that. Fijar la mirada. I like that. That's difficult for me to pronounce. To fix your gaze. So mirada is gaze. Second of all, el profe fijó pretor tense su atención. En la pizarra. Try and roll that R if you can. The teacher focused on the white board. Pizarra can mean white board or blackboard. You know, if you want to be specific, pizarra blanca for white board. Again, preterite tense, fijo, as in the previous examples. And in this case, you notice how fijar is followed by atención or mirada, gaze or uh, attention. Therefore, it means to uh, focus or to pay attention to. And then finally, fijar, to attach, affix or fasten. So this is in a, in a DIY sense. You know, it's more practical. And this is the final uh, meaning of fijar. So I'm going to leave one example here. Hay que fijar, the uh, infinitive here, AR, el estante a la pared. You have to fix the shelf to the wall. So it's actually something you physically have to do. All right. So a recap then. Fijar can mean to determine, set or establish something like a date or a time, something like that. You're organizing something. If it's followed by mirada or atención, it's to pay attention to or to focus. And then finally here, a more practical DIY sense of it actually having to fix uh, or fasten or attach something. So, that's fijar. Now let's look at the reflexive uh, fijarse. And how do we know it's a reflexive, first of all? Good question. Well, we've got the SE on the end. Okay, so we've got the infinitive here. We've got the AR verb, the infinitive. And that little SE on the end just indicates that it's reflexive. Now, that means that we always, therefore, have to include these reflexive pronouns. And these are highlighted in green. The me, de se. Nos, os, se. Now those always stay the same, no matter what reflexive verb you have. It could be hacerse, ponerse, and fijarse. They're always going to have these reflexive pronouns. So this is the I, you, he, she, we, you, plural, or they. So then we have, so we have the reflexive pronoun, and then we have the conjugation here. And this is the present tense, as you will notice. And fijar, fijarse, is a dream to work with because... No matter what tense we use, the conjugation is always regular. There are no curveballs. So a nice one for you guys to, to get to grips with. So let's look at some examples then. It has a couple of different meanings. And the first one is to pay attention or to watch. ¿Te has fijado en el precio? Have you noticed the price? The current example now with the cost of living. So we've got the reflexive pronoun here, te, and then has fijado as well, the conjugation. 
en el precio. So have you noticed? And then a nice little phrase you might hear, uh, you might hear a lot. Fíjate bien, eh? Fíjate bien. I've heard that many times said to me. It's watch carefully, pay close attention. All right, fíjate bien. So again, we've got that reflexive pronoun here, and it's whacked on the end of the uh, command here. Fíjate, pay attention, watch carefully. So that's the first one, and the second one again. We have the reflexive fijarse, and we've got this little n whacked on the end, and in this case, it means to notice, to sense, or detect. So I'll leave you with one example. La madre se fijó en la sonrisa de su hijo. Nice little rhythm to that one, unintentional. The mother noticed her son's smile. So again, reflexive, the reflexive pronoun se. The conjugation in the preterite tense here, fijó. Remember, enunciate that with the accent. En, which means to notice, okay, or to, to, to really, uh, to sense, notice, or detect, okay? So those are the differences there. A little recap, un resumen, which means summary. Fijar, we've got three meanings. The first one is to determine, to set or to establish if we're talking about a date or a time for something, perhaps. The second one is to focus or to pay attention to. And the third one is in a DIY sense to fix, attach or fasten something. And finally, moving on to fijarse, the reflexive, the meaning of that. A good way to remember this is that it's reflexive. It's got that added SE on the end. So it's kind of more personal. It's more deep. It's got a deeper feeling to it. And therefore, it means to really focus or to pay close attention to, as we saw. And if you put the N on as well, it's to notice, sense or detect. So I hope that has cleared things up, chicos. And that was fijar and fijarse. So I hope you've got that clear now. and feeling confident to go out and impress some people with your newfound Spanish abilities. Like I said at the beginning of the video, please do like this video, subscribe to the channel, leave some feedback in the comments and head to chatspanish.online, pop your, news, uh, your email in there to subscribe to the weekly newsletter. Un abrazo, hasta luego.